Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another curriculum review video. In today's video, we are gonna be tackling sunlight science. In specific, level B. We love sunlight science. This is actually our second year using it. I can put up the link for my review on level A, but same as last year, sunlight science is just a perfect balance for my family and for me specifically, because I love that the science really teaches the science subject matter, like what is known in the field, as well as being able to direct you as the parent to look at that information through a biblical lens. Now, does it include secular materials? Yes, very much so. And that works for me personally, because I like to be able to explain it to my kids from that stance and that standpoint. But again, it is very much a Christian curriculum. It is very much biblical, especially in the instructor guide and all the notes that Sunlight provides for me to really pinpoint and highlight God in creation and God in science. And so let me just hop into the video because I could talk about science forever, right? So let's hop in. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome or welcome back, all the things. Like I said, we are talking about science today. In particular, I am reviewing the Sunlight Level B five-day program. So this is the only program I use for sunlight that is five days because I love science so much and I don't wanna miss any of the books. And so Level B, we studied matter, ecosystems, earth science, as well as engineering design, and I'll show you all the books. And so like my previous review, which I reviewed the HBLB in my last video. I'm gonna go through all the different resources, chat through what we liked, what we didn't like, some of my kids' favorites, as well as do kind of an overall thoughts. Like, what did I think? Did it teach my kids? Did they enjoy it? Some overall thoughts of the program. And so that's the plan for today. But like I just mentioned, I do also use the history Bible literature as well as the language arts, which I'm not talking about in this video. The language arts I went into when I talked about my second and third graders curriculum recap. So if you're curious about that, go see that. But let's hop in. So resources. I feel like there were three kind of main spine books and then some other books to really round out the curriculum. So here are the three spine books. So we started with this one, which is a DK find out earth. When we were talking more about the earth and atmosphere and different rock types and things like that, we were really in that book. And then in the middle of the program, we studied through this animal book. This is a us born world of animals book. And I love that it went continent by continent. So we did a little bit of geography with our science while we studied ecosystems and while we studied the different types of animals. And that was fun. And then we ended up the year with plants, which I just felt was perfect because we were rolling into springtime. And so we used this DKI wonder plant book to really flesh out plants and our understanding of the plant world, which I just loved. I loved all three of these books. I feel like the thing about these more encyclopedia based science textbooks is there's a point when they start to be a little bit boring. And so what I love about how, well, at least how I perceive this science to be designed is they use this as kind of the backbone, but then there's some other books that they use to really flesh it out, to really kind of go deeper and make it more fun. But I feel like by the time we were at the end of all three of these books, my kids were pretty much done with that subject matter. Like they were tired of animals, especially. I feel like the longest of these was the animal book. And that was the one where just, they're just like, I'm so tired of animals. And I'm like, I agree, I feel you. But was it beautiful? Was it informative? Did they learn something? Yes, to all of that. I feel like they were able to learn a lot of stuff. And I included in my monthly updates some more discussion about these books because I found especially this one that the activity sheets that went with this were really helpful because you had to cut out the different animals and put them in the different zones of like North America, there was like the desert or the tundra or kind of all the different places that the animals could be found. They had to kind of cut and paste, which really my kids enjoyed. And so that kept them engaged. But yet some of the activity sheets for say this book were a little too hard. Like it, especially when we were getting into the different types of rocks and all of the words for the rocks, they were just like, 
I don't know. I don't remember. I can't tell you if it was granite or limestone or sandstone. They just, they're like checked out. So at that point, when I see that with my kids, because I do enjoy the activity sheets, which I think I was gonna talk about this later, but I'm gonna talk about it now. I do enjoy the activity sheets unless my kids are starting to feel like it's just too hard. Like, I don't know, why would I know that? Then we kind of take a step back from them, but otherwise they enjoy answering those. They enjoy working together and competing and like trying to like match up the different ecospheres or whatever we're learning. They can match them all up and they just really enjoy that. So I hold the activity sheets really loosely. When they're a good tool, I use them. When they're starting to kind of have negative connotations, we pull back and either I discuss it with them or we just don't worry about the different types of rocks and layers of the earth and things like that. So anyway, I did want to mention that, but let me show you a couple of the other books that really rounded out these ideas. So we had Magic School Bus Inside the Earth. So again, this was where they were talking all sorts of like marble and limestone and shale and sandstone and I don't know. It's fine, I find it interesting they did not actually they did not but i still think it's good information and it's important to expose them to it and then this one is one about solids liquids and gases this was a good cute little book that they were able to really wrap their head around especially gases because i feel like that one's a little harder to understand what that is these are one of the read and find out books so i like these and then another magic school bus this was waterworks and they really enjoyed this one as well this had more of the water cycle, and they just enjoyed that more than the rocks. So this was another big hit, but actually the ones I have left are favorites. So here is a favorite. My daughter put this on her favorites, even when she was being asked to pick her favorite literature books, she, she picked this one. I was like, no, no, that's the science book. But she loved this. It's Marie Curie. This was the woman who discovered radium, and it was just fascinating to her. They really, like these we did past year last year and they just loved it i feel like it's story form but there's pictures and it really helps make the life of a scientist come alive because my daughter's really interested in science she takes all the science classes that they're in richmond school she just really likes science so the idea of wrapping her head around what a scientist does is really appealing to her the other book that all four of my kids loved. Yes, even including my five-year-old twins. They, they loved the Lift the Flap periodic table book. I think it's not so much the subject matter as how much fun this book made the elements. Like all these different elements, it's hard to see. They are a little bit dressed up. They all have kind of unique personalities. Like they gave the elements personalities and my kids loved it and they even still look at this today they'll pull this off the shelf this is one of the ones they'll pull off often and i mean it's a lift the flat book so that's just always fun too but it's the periodic table which can be kind of boring but i feel like they still talk about the periodic table which is just fun so that was one of the books and then these two books were the five day books and this is why i love the five day book because this was a favorite my son's favorite book from all the whole year was this see how it's made and it goes through different things like this was ballet shoes how are ballet shoes made from start to finish and this was legos how are legos made from start to finish so two things my kids really love right now is dance and legos so they all enjoyed this book and then this one this is different we didn't actually read this as it was scheduled but my son has previously taken a coding class at his enrichment school. And so what I did was I set him up with Scratch and the spare computer that we're gonna start using for our homeschool computer. And he's been coding. I got him a lot of other resources, but he started with this book, which is coding for beginners using Scratch. It's an us form book. It came with our five day program. He loves it. He loves following the instructions and being able to make the different designs, the different games using these instructions, I honestly don't have a clue, but he really enjoys it. And he's gotten to the point where now he's making up his own games. He's not like just following the templates in books like this. And so it's been a huge win, a huge win. My daughter didn't really get to experience coding too much, but she doesn't seem that interested. So I wasn't too worried about it. 
But those were some of the resources. The other part of the science curriculum is the experiments. I really love the experiments. I've talked about this before. I talked about it in length in a video I made where it was a do an experiment with us. So I will link that if you're curious about kind of how sunlight runs its experiments, which these are all the updated experiments. Like they just went through and they've started making these discover and do programs. So good. And so this is, well, it says second grade, but it goes with the science B program. And the experiments are so well laid out and they have so much just thought with them. So it is like demonstration slash experiment. It kind of depends on what question is being asked, but it helps the kids really engage with the material because it's a lot of question, think about design, redesign sort of situation. So it's very much focuses on that engineering process, which I love. And so that's the book. And then I couldn't do it without my kit. I couldn't do it without the kit. And so this comes with all the little pieces that you need to do the experiments. Now, did we do all of the experiments? No, I'd say we did probably around 20 of the 36 experiments. Now we could do some this summer if we feel so inclined and I'm not sure if we will or not, but I feel like that was a win. I don't feel the need to be like, we must do an experiment every week. Cause some weeks are just, other things are challenging and the experiment looks really intricate and I'm just not sure if I wanna do it. And so I won't. I can do that as a homeschool mom. But more often than not, when we did the experiments, it was well worth it. My kids learned a lot. Those are some of their best memories of science from the year is the experiments. And so they're worth it. Sometimes they're just hard to get going, but sunlight gives you everything you need. Mostly it's just on me if I want to pick it up for the week. But I love the experiments. I love how they do actually link with what we're learning. I'd say most of the time, sometimes that's a complaint of the sunlight science, but I have yet to see that be the case, especially with the updated editions. I feel like it always hooked up with what we were learning. Even if it was a smaller part of what we were learning, it's kind of like zoomed in on that and really helped them understand that aspect of that piece of content we learned. So I love the experiments. The next thing I want to talk about was kind of like my overall thoughts, which we've entered into that section, was the idea that I feel like you can do the sunlight science program in a more flexible way. Like you can even put it all in one day if you want, or maybe in two days, like it is scheduled for the four or five days and you can read bits and pieces. So it just really depends on how your homeschool is set up. I've done both. I've done where I've moved it all into like a science Monday and that helps me kind of do it and really prioritize the experiment and that's worked but other times we've done the readings on two days and the experiment on the day between it really depends it's very flexible i feel like you can't go wrong with that so don't feel like you have to do it a little bit every day if that doesn't fit your family or your homeschool and then i realized the other things i had written down i've already talked about that sometimes we would drop the activity sheets sometimes the terminology was a little too much for my kids the coding book was a huge hit and what else did I have? And then the fact that the, the spine books were just the right length. I feel like just about the time we were done with that subject was the time that we were switching, which I can't even imagine a program where we are staying on the same subject all year long, like just like ocean animals or something that would just drive me nuts. I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. I like that we kind of switched into three big topics like matter and ecosystems and earth science. I feel like that was really helpful. So you guys, sunlight science, it's a big hit around here. I feel like it's perfect for this age. I don't know what the upper levels are like, but for this age, it's very delightful. We get to talk about some fun science things and we get to do fun experiments. Both of my kids really love the level of science we're doing. They're not thinking it's too much or that it's not enough. Like I feel like it's a really good balance of what we need for science. So that's what I have. That's what I have to share. Please let me know down below if you're thinking about this program. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts or anything like that. I would love to answer and engage with you on that. But otherwise, you guys, that's what I have. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to. And I'll see you in the next homeschool video. All right, guys, take care. Bye.